I'm in control here. And you're going to give me what I want. You know what it is. Give me what I want. You know what I want. I've been asking for it for years. You're going to give me what I want. There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is... Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Display Moral Behavior. And this is a big episode today. We are going to do the top 100 most wanted Marvel Legends. Yep, I have taken it to the streets, I have taken it to the people, and I have asked you, what are your most wanted characters? Because the Marvel Universe has literally tens of maybe hundreds of thousands of characters, and Hasbro can only repaint so many. I mean, make so many. So which ones do we most want to see adorning our glorious shelves? So I've taken your advice, I've made a whole list of all the characters you suggested, and then I threw them in the bin and populated the entire list with Clone Saga characters, is what I was tempted to do. But then I thought, no, 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 let's do this right. I've made a nice little cultivation of your suggestions, my wants, and we're meeting somewhere in the middle and pruning this down to a hundred. It wasn't easy, but we're going to do it. So guys, let's not stand on ceremony, Mr. Wayne. Here we are, top 100 most wanted Marvel Legends. Coming in at number one, it is A-Bomb, Rick Jones. I'm going to do these alphabetically. So A, at the start, there's no aardvark character, I don't think. So it's A-Bomb. And this is a huge, big, hulky, chunky character. And... That's what we want on our shelves. So I can't remember the full backstory of A-Bomb, but I'm pretty sure he's Rick Jones all hulked out in this cool sort of like armadillo, armoured kind of style. I mean, I say ar ar armadillo because it's kind of got those sort of stripes on it, but now that I'm thinking about it, that's just abomination. That That's why he's called A-Bomb, because it's short for abomination. Duh. <laughs> I come to these realizations while I'm making these things. So yeah, an A-bomb figure would go so great with our 80th Hulk. And with that in mind, and yeah, I'm going to fudge around with this list. I'm going to be mentioning a lot more than 100 characters. Give us a new abomination. Not just A-bomb, but abomination. Emil Blonsky with the fin head on the Gamerverse body. Oh my goodness, I would love that. But because this is just one entry, I'm simply going to say Rick Jones, A-bomb, bring it on. Now another figure that we desperately need and we know is going to be coming soon is Agony. The Life Foundation symbiotes need to be completed and of course they're going to be. We've got Scream, we've got Lasher, we've got Phage. Soon we will have Agony and she looks like a great character design because it she's purple. I love purple. Purple just works for me. So there's nothing too unique about her. She's just like a purple screen. But you know what? I'll happily take a purple screen. I know what you're thinking here. We don't need any more Wolverine characters. But hear me out. When I say Wolverine characters, I mean, of course, we need more Wolverine characters, but no more versions of Wolverine. But how about... Albert in a two-pack maybe with LCD because come on Albert is a cyborg version of Wolverine and I love cyborg versions of characters I wish there was a quintessential cyborg Spider-Man type character because I love cyborg Superman with like the Terminator kind of face cyborg Wolverine being Albert again with different robotic parts and stuff just looks so cool so some writer give us an iconic cyborg Spider-Man the closest we have is the Deathlock one which is just Spidey with some accoutrements on him and then we also had a cyborg version of Scarlet Spider but that wasn't actually very excitingly designed I don't think and he only lasted for about two issues but Albert with LCD also you gotta love that name LCD LCD get it it took me a while to get it but then I saw it and I was like huh that's clever. So yeah, give us a really fun Frankenstein's monster cyborg mashup of Albert and LCD. I love that. Now a character who we've had in Toy Biz form, or was it Hasbro? I always get confused in that crossover point, but he's a big bad builder figure, 
Annihilus. We've had him before, he looked great then, and I would love to see him again. Fantastic for having a big old resurgence in the Marvel Legends format. We've got the retro Fantastic Four figures coming out. We've got Haslab Galactus. So come on, give us a big, mean, scary, terrifying, insectoid, alien creature from the depths of space. Give us Annihilus. Speaking earlier of teams that need to be completed, we have the Life Foundation, but also, oh my goodness, 90s Thunderbolts. And with that in mind, Atlas. And I don't care if you give us him on a regular sized body where he's just normal shrunk down Atlas, or better yet, and fingers crossed, give us a proper builder figure atlas and you don't have to go crazy i know that hasbro don't like doing the insane builder figures not like the old toy biz days where we had the huge galactus and apocalypse but give us a decently sized above average atlas to go with citizen v and songbird and mac one then there'll be only one more character left from the classic thunderbolts but we'll get to him later b is for banshee a classic x-men character who is way overdue. We've got a Toy Biz Banshee, but my goodness, come on guys, Banshee is sort of a standout X character. He's not one of the sort of D-team peripheral characters. Banshee is iconic and he's been in the classic X-Men animated series as well and that's what Hasbro seemed to base so many of their ideas off of because that's where a lot of the nostalgic love is. So come on, give us a proper X-Men animated Banshee. He can go with the giant size X-Men team as well. That would be fantastic. We have in our Marvel Legends collection two Dormammus now. We've got the big builder figure and now we've got the great classic looking Dormammu. But he's all on his lonesome. Even terrifying entities from beyond get lonely and that's why you need Baron Mordo. Again, a character who I know from the animated shows. I know from 90s animated Spider-Man and I never liked him in 90s animated Spider-Man because what are you doing fighting Spider-Man? Spider-Man should be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. That's Doctor Strange. Stop getting your mystical magic into my street level characters. They don't mesh. I don't like it. I don't want it. But for my cosmic or mystical shelf, yeah, you better believe I want Baron Mordo. And speaking of cosmic, come on, the Beyonder. This dude I know so little about, like teeny, teeny, tiny amounts of information about, but I do know that he is a big, big deal. Was he the person who orchestrated Secret Wars? Am I right or is that someone else? What I do know though is that he's a heavy hitter because loads of people in the discussions were asking for Beyonder. And he's got the crazy 70s kind of look which is so bizarre and unusual but also why the heck not? So yeah, I don't know much about Beyonder, but if we were announced a Beyonder, then I'd go back and I'd do all my wiki reading, I'd find out who it is, then I'd probably forget it, get everything completely wrong, and then you guys could correct me in the comments, so we're all winners. Now we're going real deep down dark and hellish with Blackheart. One of the devil, sons of Satan type characters, again, showing my ignorance here, but I do know that he features in Marvel vs. Capcom, or is it Marvel Superheroes? Wow, I'm even ignorant about the things that I'm not ignorant about. That's some hardcore ignorance. But what I do know is that he is a badass looking character. And we've seen him before from Toy Biz and he looked great then. And he could look even better with modern sculpting technology and techniques. Blackheart, just this cool spiky haired black demon with burning red eyes and a fork type tail. So cool. We can get more mystical with our characters. And that brings me to some other figures that are going to be coming up soon. We need to expand hell, basically. The Marvel Universe is too nice of a place. Bring on the hellish demons and bring on Blackheart. Now we go cosmic again with another Fantastic Four type character. Ladies and gentlemen, Blastar. Ah, 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 with the extra A. It is two, two A's at the end, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, Blaster. A Herald of Galactus, I think? I want to say. I know Terax is, but is, is Blaster? Help me out with the comments, guys. But again, this is one that I'm including because so many people have said we need Blaster. And looking at the pictures of him, 
I can see why. He looks fantastic. He would be a big chunky boy as well. And we love our big chunky figures. And now that I've chosen, as was suggested by you guys, to keep hold of my cosmic figures, I'm so glad that I have because now you're going to have Galactus and all these cosmic entities sort of spanning out and spawning out around him. And Blaster would be a fantastic addition. Actually, having said that, is Blaster... No, he's from the Microverse, isn't he? Or am I getting confused? I think Blaster is from the Microverse, and that's where the Fantastic Four go, and they find him. Is that right? Oh boy, i got to do some due diligence before I make these videos. Now one that's very much for me, and we kind of have the character already, but I want a different version, is Blue Costume Angel, or Archangel. There are so many different variants and ways of getting characters and costumes, especially with the X-Men. But as much as I love my deluxe Archangel with his Apocalypse Horseman type costume design, when I started reading the comics, and also again of course, watching the TV show, it was blue costume with the white streak and the halo. That was the Archangel that I grew up with, was familiar with. That's the Archangel who got his wings broken by Sabretooth, who went and got the Crimson Dawn for Psylocke. That's my Archangel and I want him on my shelf. A real big one now and definitely a hundred percent one that I want. But other people said as well is Cardiac. Cardiac Oh my goodness, give us Cardiac, a classic Spider-Man villain. Well, actually, I say a classic Spider-Man villain. He's from the 90s, but he's classic to me. And also, the 90s is like 30 years ago, even though in my head I think 90s. No, no, 90s was 10 years ago. No, it wasn't. It was a long time ago, and we still don't have a Cardiac figure. And there's rumors in Scuttlebutt that one of the reasons we don't is because of some licensing deal where they would need to pay Eric Larson for the rights to use him even though he was made in Marvel. I don't know. It's a whole shebang. Either way, we don't have him yet. And he's a perfect street level villain for Spider-Man because he's a doctor who kind of takes revenge on companies and corporations and like insurance companies that don't look after patients and people with medical issues and whatnot. He was featured recently in the comics in a horrible portrayal in the Iron Man comics where he was just kind of presented as this dumbass, crazy terrorist type person. It's like, no, 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 that's not Cardiac. So Marvel Comics, get your Cardiac portrayal sorted and Hasbro, give us a proper figure to do him justice. Keeping with Spider-Man, we've got a few Spider-Man ones now. We have Carrion. And Carrion, I can't believe we haven't got yet because he has been around for a long, long time. And most importantly to me, he's another addition to the Maximum Carnage set. We're so close to finishing both teams in Maximum Carnage, but Carrion is a big, big omission. There's someone who pairs up really nicely with him as well that she's going to come up later. But also Carrion and Hobgoblin slash Demogoblin, they were always working together as well in the 90s. So to have Carrion kind of floating along next to Hobgoblin, ah! That would look so, so cool. He's really overdue. He's featured in so many stories, connected to the Clone Saga as well. We need a Carrion figure. Come on, Hasbro, don't keep me waiting. And rounding out my Spider-Man villains for the C section of this list is Chance. Chance is a really fun, interesting character because he's a sort of assassin mercenary who doesn't take payment for his work as such. He places bets and he will bet on himself to complete the job and that's really fun. And he's a got a big kind of helmet with rocket boots and a jetpack and a pencil moustache. He's just a fun, silly but also awesome character who would look so good in action figure form. Now two classic characters, and I have them in the C's because I put classic, even though their actual names would have them later in the list. But I'm digressing here because it's classic Luke Cage and Iron Fist. We have Luke Cage and Iron Fist already, like that's fine, no problem, and they're great figures as well. Well, Iron Fist is a great figure, Luke Cage is fine, he's nice and big and chunky at least, but I want tiara wearing open shirt, Luke Cage from the 70s style. That would be so much fun to have. And again, to go with him, classic Iron Fist as well. Again, big popped collar, open chest, just looking sort of silly, campy, but also super fun. I think those two guys together would be fantastic. And a third classic character. I should have put them by their names and not classic because now I'm just doing them all back to back. But what are you going to do? 
classic Doctor Strange. And come on guys, this is probably the number one. If I was doing these in order of most wanted, I think classic Doctor Strange has to be there in the number one spot. How do we not have him yet? This is kind of bonkers. Since Hasbro took the license, we've had two Doctor Stranges, both of which were in their black costumes. One had a cloak, one didn't. And it's like, why are you going to do the Master of the Mystic Arts dirty like that? Uh, you're missing such a trick here. Classic Doctor Strange is something we are all begging for. And I'm thinking maybe they're holding out until the Doctor Strange sequel comes out and then we'll get a classic one or... I don't know, you can't predict Hasbro's marketing choices and whatnot. But what we all know, and the feedback I got from this list lets me know this, is that we desperately, desperately want to see classic Doctor Strange. One quick costume change and we're back and we're still with the seas and it is Corsair, leader of the Star Jammers. And okay, we could totally have every single Star Jammer in this list, and I wouldn't even be mad about that. Again, classic characters, 90s animated show featuring heavily in the comics, and of course, Cyclops' dad. So Corsair is the main one that I would be after, but I would happily take a whole Star Jammers set. But I gotta try and keep this to under 100, which is pretty much impossible considering I'm name dropping so many characters. But you also have this, the body molds and the body types that you could make so many of the figures so easily by just doing some repaints. So come on Hasbro, you know that you love the repaints, so repaint a bunch of figures and give us the Star Jammers. Going back to the Fantastic Four now, we have Crystal of the Inhumans. And again, this is something else that could spiral out so much. So many people were asking for different Inhuman characters. And I totally get that. The Inhumans are big and they're underrepresented. I think, do we only have Black Bolt and Medusa? I don't think there are any other Inhumans. Let me know if I'm wrong. But yeah, Crystal, what of the Inhumans, married Johnny Storm, got a whole big backstory, really epic kind of character history, and she's got a fun, bright look as well with the black pattern on her hair. Is that her hair or is she wearing like a hairband or something? I don't know. Either way, give us Crystal. Moving into the Ds and one that is purely for this guy right here, Red Daredevil. I know, we have a couple of Red Daredevils, but I want another one because I don't have a Red Daredevil yet and it really bugs me when I look at my collection I'm like it's kind of a quintessential figure that's not there. We've got loads of Daredevils now. We've got Armored Daredevil, we've got Yellow Daredevil, and we've got the two red ones, but the two red ones are kind of showing their age quite a bit. They're both on the Bucky Cap mold, and we are upgrading. We're moving along. Time keeps on slipping into the future. So why not give us a nice new bright red Daredevil possibly on the retro Spider-Man buck with that gorgeous upper torso swivel. Come on, Hasbro, the people are asking for it. And by the people, I mean this one person who just complains a lot. Speaking of devils, how about Damien Hellstrom? Oh, I love my spooky, creepy characters. And this is a Midnight Suns kind of character who I really, really want to see. We've got Blade, we've got modern Morbius, we've got Elsa Bloodstone, who I don't have, but I would really like to, but I'm not going to pay 40 quid for Elsa, even though she does look good. Maybe I might convince myself. No, no, I can't. You could get, like, that's 10% of Galactus. That's crazy. No, Dave, you can't do that. Can't do that. So, what was I saying? Damien Hellstrom. Yeah, Son of Satan looks really great. I can't imagine Disney having Son of Satan on an action figure, but Damien Hellstrom you could probably get away with that. Maybe Damien Hextrom. Ah, that could work. More satanic type characters now with Danny Ketch, Ghost Rider. Yes, I have been asking for this for so, so long. Come on, Hasbro, give us another Rider's Wave. We love the Rider's Wave. So give us the classic black leather jacket with the spiky shoulder pads, the gray jeans, and just the rocker biker look. He's so cool. And then with the 90s motorbike, there's so much you can do with that character that would look aces. Put him next to our current Ghost Rider, which is one of my all-time favorite Marvel legends. That's a no-brainer. Gonna look so great. And again, with a Midnight Suns style display, that's gonna totally kick butt. Hasbro Marvel Legends team, you want to make Death's Head, yes? 
Yes, of course you do. Not Death's Head 2, which is really cool. That's one of my favorite underrated hidden gem figures, but classic Death's Head. First appearing more in like the Transformers universe, the creator of Death's Head did like a clever little sneaky thing where he wrote him in an original story so that he owned him, then put him in Transformers, but then he could take him to the Marvel universe. Kind of a similar sort of thing to Angela, but Death's Head just looks so weird and unique. The robot head, the big tusk type things, and then his kind of traveler sort of gear and clobber. And again, like I was saying about Albert and LCD, I love cyborg characters. So Death's Head absolutely is way high up there on my most wanted list. From Death's Head to Death's Bird, or Death Bird, no, there's no S in it, but Death Bird. I was talking earlier about Corsair and the Star Jammers. Well, bring on the rest of the Shi'ar Empire. Death Bird looks so cool. I love purple. She's got wings and feathers. She's bad, but kind of good, but kind of bad. She's kind of like the space Loki. Even though Asgard is in space, so that's kind of the he, space Loki is is Loki, but you know what I mean. I was about to say like space female Loki, but we have a space female Loki as well. But Death Bird, she doesn't need to be compared to anyone because she stands alone as herself, as a great character and deserving of a great action figure. We've had him before, but good lord almighty do we want him again. Dragon Man. Oh gosh, of all the older generation Toy Biz style figures, Dragon Man is a massive grail for a lot of people and he goes for a big chunk of change, alright? If you had that money in your hand, you could choke a dozen donkeys on it. It is worth a lot of money. We need a new Dragon Man and again Fantastic Four is making a resurgence. So why not give us what we want, Batista style. Give me what I want! We want Dragon Man, ideally a big chunky builder figure. That would look fantastic. Now a character who I don't know much of anything about, but a lot of people were asking for them, and that is Eternity. Eternity, one of the Cosmic Elders, maybe certainly a godlike type being. I don't know if it would be too big or too small or what, but everyone was saying, Eternity, Eternity, Eternity. So, Eternity. I mean, look, all the stars and galaxy looking designs, looks beautiful. I don't know how a figure would scale, if it would be working within our sort of Marvel Legends displays. I mean, come on, we've got a 32 inch Galactus on the way, so it's not unreasonable. But yeah, why the heck not? I'm going to throw Eternity in there because you guys are all suggesting it, and I like my big kind of cosmic tentpole characters, even though I don't, might not know who they are. If they're kind of essential to the workings of the Marvel Universe, then you gotta have them. Now a character who would look so toyetic and just really cool and interesting is Exodus. One of Magneto's, what do you call them? Not horsemen, acolytes. That was it. I managed to think of it on my train of thought. I would love all the acolytes because again, it's so 90s and animated series. Although Exodus didn't actually appear in the animated series, I don't think. But he's bright pink with giant wing type things on his back. They're not actually wings, but they look like a wing kind of design. He looks so cool. I'm not even sure what his powers are. I can't really remember. But I know, I know that he was Magneto's right-hand man. He was like his fixer. He would sort of be the, the muscle. Not that Magneto needs muscle because he's the master of magnetism. But you get what I'm saying. Either way, on the shelf, on the display, to have Magneto flanked by Exodus and maybe, maybe Fabian Cortez as well. I love Cortez because he's such a rotten, evil little Iago type character. Those two guys backing up Magneto? That would look badass. A character who we may very well be seeing, perhaps in a tier type situation, is Fire Lord. Fire Lord, one of the Heralds of Galactus, unlike Nova, who is not a Herald of Galactus, despite what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean like Rich Rider type Nova. No. Apparently there's more than one character in the Marvel Universe called Nova. Who knew? But Fire Lord, I can definitely say, is a Herald of Galactus and does look awesome with the great fiery kind of effects and stuff and we're all hoping we don't know what the tiers for Galactus are going to be but if one of them is Fire Lord I think we're going to be very happy. <laughs> now a character that no one asked for but I'm going to put on the list because it's my list all right and that is Gaunt. I know what you're thinking. Who? Gaunt. 
the person who was the mastermind behind the clone saga for a couple of issues before it was revealed that there was a mastermind on top of the mastermind who was actually above other masterminds that were revealed throughout the two years of the clone saga. Gaunt is the robot master, is it? Mendel, Mendel Strom? I, <laughs> I don't even know the backstory of the character that I desperately want. But if you see pictures of him, you could either have the guy in the life support machine that's kind of frail, but also kind of badass as well, because again, it's sort of cyborg and robot-y, or we could have a builder figure of the giant mech suit, Terminator-style Gaunt, who would look so much fun on a, on a display. And it would be a great conversation topic, because everyone could come over to your house and go, who is that? I've never heard of that character before. And you'd be like, I don't even know, some schmuck on YouTube was just asking for him. And they'd be like, oh, a schmuck on YouTube? You must watch Model Behaviour as well. <laughs> yeah, I do. And then bonded for life. Sticking with the Gs, we have Gorgon. And this is where I'm going to get ahead of myself here. There are two Gorgons in the Marvel Universe, and I'm guessing that people were mainly asking for the Inhuman Gorgon. I think that's probably a likely bet. That's quite a popular character. But also, don't sleep on Hydra Gorgon as well. Maybe people were like 50-50 split on which one they were referring to. But I really like the Hydra Gorgon. If I'm thinking of the right character, gosh, I hope I am. This is what happens when I try to include suggestions that I'm not totally up on myself. But I'm thinking of Gorgon who's like the samurai type mutant, who his mutant ability is that he can kill anyone who he lays eyes on. I'm not sure how that works exactly, but it did work because he killed Wolverine, so he must be onto something. But just having a badass looking samurai type character that you could maybe put next to Silver Samurai in a display, that would work really well. You want to get mythological here? Griffin. This is a character who I have seen lots of pictures of. I know him. Someone says Griffin and I'm like, oh yeah, the big Griffin guy. Can't remember reading any stories with him. I think he might have popped up in Superior Spider-Man of all places at some point. But come on, a, a giant Griffin type character? How much fun would that be? He would look so good on the shelf. Will we see him? Possibly not, because I imagine he would take a lot of original sculpting, and I don't know if that could be justified for such a D-level character. Sorry, Griffin fans, if, if you are out there, but he's not exactly like an A-list heavy hitter, and when we re require so many A-list heavy hitters still to be made, I think he's probably quite far down the line, but oh, oh my goodness. If Hasbro made him, I would buy the heck out of him. Do you want a massive cheat now? I'm, I'm going to do a massive cheat. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, all of them. There you go. <laughs> this is how I keep the list to 100, is I just lump guys in together. But give us the Guardians of the Galaxy. We had a box set, but that was a long, long time ago. And not only are they very hard to come by, but also the designs are a little bit outdated now. So give us an up-to-date, modern Guardians. And of course, the Guardians of the Galaxy, that spans, it's like the X-Men or the Avengers. Like, well, who do you include? Give us the MCU Guardians, but in Marvel Legends form. Give us Star-Lord. Give us... Wow, my mind just went blank there. That, that That's crazy. I wanted to say, what Nebula Sister? Gamora. Jeez, there you go. You can see the cogs turning in my head there. It's because I'm overheating, folks. But yeah, a comic book Rocket and Groot as well, a Drax. That would be wonderful. And again, like so many on this list, <laughs> I'd buy the heck out of them. Let's take it back down to earth now with as gangster a character as you can get, Hammerhead. Right now, Hammerhead has only been represented with a single head that we got with the chameleon, which is okay, but it doesn't really work because Hammerhead is meant to be a bigger, hulkier, chunkier guy. Not a giant or anything. He's still just a normal dude, but he's a thick hoss of a guy. I mean, the whole idea is that his head is like a battering ram, so that's not gonna work if you got a neck that looks like a stack of dimes, all right? We need a chunky figure body to go with a decent hammerhead type design. So guys, give us that, because also, oh, now that I think about it, I was gonna say Joe Fix, Joe fix It. You know, we've got the Joe Fix It bath from the Gamerverse type line, but at the same time, that might be a little bit too big. That's a bit inhuman, but something in the middle, that would work great. Do that for Hammerhead. Going back over to the X-Men franchise now, we have Harpoon. And there are so many Marauder type characters, you could lump them all in together, which, let's face it, I'm not techni technically gonna do. 
but I can't stop you from just imagining that I am. So there you go, we all win, but specifically Harpoon, because let's face it, he's got the esteemed kind of infamy of being the guy who took out Archangel's wings and sent him down that apocalypse route, which is so iconic and classic. I was always kind of disappointed when I eventually saw the artwork of that because I just heard the backstory that Harpoon kind of destroyed Archangel's wings and I was like, ooh, that must have been really nasty. And then actually you see the comic panel and it's just like a harpoon through each wing. You're like, couldn't you just walk that off, to be honest? I mean, people have come back from worse. If if it was me, I would have just shrugged it off, maybe taken a paracetamol and then just carried on fighting. But, you know, we can't all be heroes. But we do need a harpoon to at least stage that. And maybe some great diorama photographer people can make it look as gnarly as it really should have been. You want to get high? Let's get high evolutionary. Yep, I think this has actually been teased or semi-confirmed or pretty much totally confirmed, but my finger isn't on the pulse. But high evolutionary might be in the Fantastic Four retro wave, I think. And he should be, because he is a character who goes way back. He's got all the crazy Vundagore type animal men that he's made, which I don't think we'll get any of those. I don't need like a, a cow woman in my collection or anything, but a giant pink armored High evolutionary? Yeah, yeah, I will definitely take that. That would evolve my collection to another level. See what I did there with the evolutionary? Damn, wasted on you. Okay, this is a fun one, and it can be a reuse repaint as well. Horseman Hulk. Oh my goodness. So 90s, so over the top, so great. Hulk at one time was a horseman of Apocalypse. I'm not telling you anything you didn't already know. And all Apocalypse really did was just take the Hulk and put some armor on him. I mean, how are you going to juice up the Incredible Hulk? Hulk is already the strongest one there is. Just ask him. But it was basically the Hulk in futuristic gladiator style armor. So don't think of Planet Hulk because it was more kind of a mask and a big spiky shoulder pad. And we do have a figure of that from way back in the day, the long, long ago. But we need an updated one. Retool the 80th Hulk to be a Horseman Hulk. Ah, that would be amazing. Sticking with Horsemen, I would love to see a Horseman Wolverine. Yep, again, going back into the late 90s, we had Horseman Wolverine, where it was kind of cool, where there was a story in which Wolverine is killed in the middle of a battle, and everyone's like, oh my god, Wolverine's been killed, that shouldn't happen. And then they do an autopsy, and he turns back into a Skrull, and you're like, wait a minute, if Wolverine is a Skrull, then where's Wolverine? And Wolverine is in fact a horseman of apocalypse with a cool kind of scarf that covers his head and samurai type armor and a big old sword. It looked great. It was a funky design, which I would love to see in action figure form. Another character who has been horribly underrepresented in modern Marvel Legends is Howard the Duck. Come on, he is officially in the MCU, so why do we not have a new Marvel Legend of him? He did exist way back. He was a pack-in with Silver Surfer. I don't think it was every Silver Surfer. It was like a variant came with Howard the Duck, and that was the only time we've really got him. So quite simply, he's such a great kind of cosmic character that sort of transcends reality a bit to kind of poke fun at our own world. I love Howard the Duck. Everyone loves Howard the Duck. Give us Howard the Duck! We're gonna go a little bit off-piste now into the year 2099 with a fan suggestion. A fan of the action figures, not a fan of model behavior. That always sounds so egotistical when I'm like, you know, I was talking to a fan the other day and they were telling me how great I was. And by the way, they mentioned that we need a Hulk 2099 and I am all for that. Come on Hasbro, retool the 80th Hulk again. I'm not even mad. Give the big spiky toothed crazy gnarly look with the wild flowing blanker hair and the big tongue. That's what the 2099 Hulk is. It's kind of like a cross between sort of symbiote with the big teeth and the tongue and then blanker from Street Fighter with the big hair. That would be so much fun. I don't particularly want an entire 90, 2099 set but I would make an exception for a 2099 Hulk and maybe Ghost Rider and a few others. Let's take it back to the regular 616 now with hybrid. And for some people that will be another 
who? But hybrid is the life foundation symbiotes all mashed up together to create one single entity, which is hybrid, who only existed for a couple of backup stories in Venom one shots back in the 90s. So very obscure and also canonically dead now. Well, actually, the host is dead, killed by Eddie Brock when he was going through his symbiote hunter phase. But the Life Foundation symbiotes... Symbiotes? <laughs> is that a Canadian... Uh, ex, uh, what am I trying to say? A Canadian... How, what's when different countries use different... Um, not expressions? Pronunciation! Oh my goodness, I'm getting too hot in here. My brain's just overheating, it's crazy. But I'm gonna wear the hat so that you don't get glare off my forehead. <laughs> What the hell was I saying? Hybrid. Yeah, they're all separate now. The symbiotes. But as a character, he looked really cool with the brownish, reddish kind of hue with the insectoid sort of antenna. He looked great. He looked like fun. And I'd love to add him to the symbiote shelf. Let's get back up in the cosmos now with Jack of Hearts. A few people suggested Jack of Hearts, and I only remember him from a Marvel Masterworks trading card from back in like 1994. But I saw him and I thought, this guy looks really cool. I love the Jack of Hearts playing card kind of design. So what do I know about him? Literally nothing. I think he has died though. I don't know if he's come back, but I remember hearing that he died. But I would happily have him in Marvel Legend form to go in my universe cosmos type collection because he looks really fun. Let's take it way back to the streets now with Jigsaw, the classic Punisher villain. Punisher is really underrepresented when it comes to villains, and Jigsaw is a big one, and he would be so easy to make. Again, we have plenty of suited bodies, and he is just a normal-sized human being. He's not like Hammerhead or anything where he should be a bit bigger and chunkier, so it's just a regular human-sized body with a mashed-up, mangled-looking face. And now that I'm thinking about regular suited type characters, I know a figure that I don't have on the list, which is so stupid that it's an omission, so I'm going to throw him in now, is Mr. Negative. Come on, guys. It's just a head with a suit. It would be so easy. Then maybe you could give us some inner demon heads as well. Oh my goodness. I'm just writing this myself. Hasbro, you know where to contact me. I can be in your creative team. We can just do an entire series of Clone Saga lines. You'll love it. Business will go through the roof. But in the meantime, give us both Jigsaw and Mr. Negative. This list is way over 100 now. Are you ready for an obscure character that's just for me and me alone? Of course you are. Judas Traveler. Again, it's a who type character, but if you read the Clone Saga, Judas Traveler was going to be like the next big cosmic character. Basically, he was presented as a god who had been around for eternity. He was there at the crucifixion. He was there through all history, and he was obsessed with the idea of good and evil, and he wanted to study Peter Parker because he couldn't believe that this person was so selfless and so good, so he was testing him. I thought it was really interesting, but unfortunately, they didn't really know where to go go with the character. So eventually they just revealed that he was a mutant who had like reality, not even reality warping. He could just change people's perceptions of reality, which made them think that he was an amazing God type character, but actually he wasn't. He was just a wacko jacko noodle tune type person who was crazy. And then he just disappeared from the comics and we never saw him again, but he looked super fun and I would love to see him. Let's go over to some New Warriors slash Avengers type character with Justice. Justice has been around for a long time, and I think we kind of have him in legend form in a way, because am I right that Vance Astro is Justice? Is it the same person? I get a little bit lost, but I think that might be, but I don't want Vance Astro, if that is the same character. I want Justice. I want New Warriors justice because we're still building up that new warriors team and especially because they feature so prominently in the clone saga as well justice was like the main leader of the new warriors he was the cyclops he was the captain america of the new warriors we desperately need that classic look for him Let's go over to the Savage Land now with Kazar. And we have had a Kazar three pack with Shanna and Zebu before, but that is quite old and very expensive. A new Kazar kitted out with great jungle Tarzan type accessories, that would be terrific. And then if you want to, you can give us another Shanna, Sh Shanna, Shana, Shana, whatever. You can give us more Savage Land type characters, but essentially we really want a Kazar figure. We got a big one now.
This is a big one, and a very modern one as well, that a lot of people requested, and rightly so. Null. The god of the symbiotes. This would have to be a builder figure. Because he's not like an insane giant, but he is... He's a big dude, and he's got that great white face with the evil maniacal smile. He's got the armor, the huge black symbiote sword. He looks so badass. We, we've got to get him. We must get him eventually. He's been portrayed as such a huge heavy hitter in the Marvel Universe over the last couple of years. They really need to give us a null, hopefully in the next couple of years. But one thing that I'll also say, null has kind of changed the game with symbiotes now because Sometimes in different media, like Ultimate Spider-Man or the movies sometimes, or not necessarily the movies, but possibly the PS4 Spider-Man game, it's often portrayed that Venom was created in a lab. He's like an Earth creation. Whereas actually Null, being a character, really does establish that the symbiotes for their story, for their backstory, have to be this alien race because it ties in so much to the rest of the Marvel Universe now. Some people might not like that, but I'm really all for embracing it. I love it. And with that in mind, give us Null for our shelves. A figure that was a huge suggestion for so many people and going back to the Inhumans is Lockjaw. There is an amazing Lockjaw available at the moment, which is it Mezco? I, I could be wrong. But there is a fantastic Lockjaw out there, but it's very expensive. But for the Marvel Legends, if we could get a Lockjaw builder figure, you know what, I'm not a big Inhumans guy, so I wouldn't buy an entire wave just to build Lockjaw, but I know a lot of people would. But hey, that's why I'm including him, because I might not want him, but I'm a man of the people, and this is the people's list. So you get Lockjaw. Another figure who I'm not massively fond of, but he was mentioned too many times not to include, and that is Longshot from the Mojoverse. And considering that he is the dad of Shatterstar, is that right? I think it would be good to have him represented because he does feature a lot in the original cartoon and then all throughout the 90s or the late 80s, maybe. My chronology is kind of off, but he is definitely a standout iconic character. And if we got him, then you could pair him up with the old Toy Biz Mojo Baff or maybe even start, you know, the rumblings for a new Mojo. Again, I don't think I would necessarily want Mojo, but I would happily get him to kind of have that nice cohesion with the figures. So either way, long shot. Is he a long shot? We'll find out. Back to Spider-Man now with Madam Web. And Madam Web is one that I'm kind of conflicted on because, again, she's sort of mystical. And I don't like mystical with my Spider-Man. I like real worldish. But she is such a prominent character in the 90s animated show, in the comic books at the moment. Well, actually, not at the moment. I think she's dead now because she's been replaced by Jessica... Carpenter, Julia Carpenter. So there's a new Madam Web, but we're all thinking about the old fashioned Madam Web with her big spider web kind of thrown and the blindfold and all that kind of thing. And actually, now that I think about it, if they make an old lady head and body, that could totally be retooled for Aunt May. So there you go. As silly as it sounds, we want our old women in our collections. Give us Madam Web, and as an offshoot, give us Aunt May as well. I can't believe it didn't include Aunt May originally. Give us an Aunt May and Uncle Ben 2-pack. That would, that would also be great. Come on, just give me everything I want. You're gonna give me what I want! All right, guys, we're gonna leave it there. We're about halfway through. I think that's number 51 or 52. So we're halfway through the list, and I've been rambling for a long time already. So we're gonna stop that here, and then we can come back in the next video for the final half of our top 100 slash 120 by the end of this list characters that we... You and me, but mostly me, <laughs> want to see from Marvel Legends. So folks, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, then join the 6-1 Clicks by clicking the like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next 50 Marvel Legends. Otherwise, you'll just be left wondering. It'll be like a TV show that finishes after the first season and it ends on a cliffhanger and then it gets cancelled and then you never find out what happens. American Gothic, I'm looking at you. If you don't know what American Gothic is, go look it up. It was a badass show. I... Oh, I can't believe we never got a second season. Anyway, I digress. Also, I'd like to just mention that the Patreon is still closed. And I really appreciate that since I gave my warning about there being serious repercussions if anyone else joined, 
No one else has joined. So thank you for respecting that and leaving the elite members of the Patreon as just the set that they are. And no one else has tried to sneak in there and get all the amazing videos and extras and the kudos of being a Patreon supporter. Well done. That shows a lot of discipline. I'm proud of you. So guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back with the second half very soon. And until then, keep displaying model behavior.